A special thank you to our main sponsor of the channel, Squarespace. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. If I sound a little bit different, it's because I'm sort of <coughs> not planned, not a planned cough, not a planned cough. <coughs> I'm just getting over COVID, if you must know. I'm a little bit ill. And I'm filming in bulk today, so if you see me sat here looking like this for a little while, that is why. It's because I'm going away for my birthday in about a week or so, and I need to make sure I've got everything sorted because I have some obligations to fulfill. So, without further ado, this week's video is going to be on something I've mentioned before. This is going to be my top 10 alocasia of all time, and it's quite interesting. Now, I've done this before, and the link is down below to Philodendron and Anthurium at this point, Maybe I should make a playlist. I don't know. But today I'm doing it on Alocasia. And the weird thing is, right? The weird thing is, I have not owned all of these Alocasia in this list. I haven't, which is, I know that, I know that sounds crazy. I know that sounds crazy, but I actually haven't. Not really anyway. Have I? Yeah, no, there's definitely some I haven't. And I know why that is, right? Because I do love Alocasia, but the two reasons why I haven't owned everything on this list, and a lot of them I've admired them from afar, so I won't be able to give you like the all round knowledge that I usually can. Two reasons. One, I've always lived in apartments. Such apartments that usually have like big windows on one side of them. So generally light is very low. Alocasia generally aren't the best for low light. They grow a bit leggy, they grow a bit weird and all the rest. So when I had to downsize, the alocasias were the first to go. Okay. The other reason is in this shop, as we all probably may know by now, alocasias, when they are, you know, unrooted and stuff, they ship really badly. They ship really badly. And I do get the odd thing in. They're usually variegated when I do, but even then I don't get many in. So generally speaking, my life lacks alocasia a lot, but believe me, it's not because I don't enjoy them because I absolutely love them. And honestly, because I have my new house with skylights in it, I think an alocasia has to fit in there at some point. So I'm going to talk about my top 10 plants, but if there are some that you're like, Kelly, you've never owned one of those, you're absolutely right. And I will point them out as we go through. So you're not going crazy. Some of these I've never had before. Before we get into this video, if you happen to have missed it, I have just recently launched, one second. I have just recently launched the fertilizer I've been working on for well over two years. I've launched it. I've launched it to the UK for now, but I'm literally in talks with my producer on expanding this out very, very soon. Like literally, I have a meeting tomorrow. By the time you see this, I've had the meeting. This is an adaptive fertilizer for all things Aroid. I do use it on other stuff as well. It has things like B vitamins in that help reduce stress. You can obviously use it with both soil and hydroponic media, such as Leco, which is really, really good. And I've also boosted the calcium and magnesium in this because plants such as Anthurium tend to need a bit extra of this. So normally you find people putting that in. So it's got a lot of good stuff in it. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. If you're interested, the link for that is down below. But I just wanted to remind people because I know not everyone might have seen this. I haven't really posted about it on my socials beyond my launch video so so if you're interested link is in the description i think you'll enjoy it let's get into it at number 10 on my top 10 alocasia of all time is not an alocasia i've owned it's not an alocasia i've owned now i'll be honest this one was probably in line with a few of these that i could have put in at number 10 because for some reason when i make these top 10s i swear to you i get to about eight or nine and then i struggle for the last two because it's almost like i should be doing top eight or top nine but who does a top eight or top nine so anyway the number 10 on my list is the alocasia nebula this is really really nice i have not owned it in real life i have I haven't even seen it in real life, actually. Come to think of it, I've never even seen it. I'm sure I've never had it into the shop. Now I'm like gaslighting myself thinking, have I? I think I haven't. I think I haven't. I've had other things in, but it's not been that. And it's a really, really pretty alocasia. It's like a really cool silvery textured number. And it mimics a lot of the alocasia further up this list that I actually enjoy a lot. So for that reason, I've popped it on there. I can't say anything about this plant at all because I've never owned it. Pretty sure I've never seen it in real life. All the rest. So I would have this one if I could, but again, it's a number 10. It's a number 10. So there's obviously things that I would prefer in this list. Moving straight on to number nine. And you know what? It might just be the season that we're in, but I really want one of these. And I'm, I'm willing to almost psychologically like move this up the list, but I'm aware that it's probably the time of year. Now this alocasia, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what it is and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about it because this alocasia is really cool to me. So I'm talking about the alocasia local. I know, I know, I know. So what I think it is, 
it is a mutant allocation Amazonica. So the, the bog standard allocation that's in all the stores, I'm pretty sure it's like a mutant one of them. And it's funny because years and years and years and years ago, it was probably 2019 when I not long started my Red Plant Index series, I did allocation. And I put the local right in at the end, right in at the end, because it was kind of like a random picture on the internet and someone had called it that. And then it just... It just ceased to be. I, I never saw it. Like, I've never seen anyone owning it or anything. Fast forward to very recently, I'm actually seeing it. I think it's been tissue cultured. So whoever's had it, I'm assuming it was literally the one mutant that this has come from. So it is quite special, really. I think whoever's had the one mutant's gone, hey, let's let's do this. And they've gone and produced a lot of it. So I think what I'm saying is, guys, you can actually buy this. And I might have to get one for myself. I'm going to London in about a week or so. And I think if I see something like this there, I'm totally going to get it. I'm totally going to get it because I, I really fancy it. They're just weird, right? Don't wrong that that's not an allocation for everybody. Completely accept that. But it's kind of for me. And it's weird because in terms of like weird stuff, I wouldn't say anything was weird on this list. And I've got a separate video for all of that coming up for Halloween. But I kind of like it. I can't even tell you why I like it. I might hate it in person, I don't know. Because obviously previously, I've only ever gone off the one image, right? And the stuff that's coming out now is tissue cultured, so it's small. But I kind of love it. Let me know if you think I'm kind of mental for liking it, but I really like it. I've never owned it, but I've known about it for years since it was just one rogue plant on the internet. So it's in at number nine. Number eight is not a one I've owned, but it's always one I've said that I would absolutely seek to have. And you know what? I know they came out. Was it 2020 or 2021? I just never picked one up. I guess I just never got around to it. But at number eight, we have the allocation. And I think this is how you say it. As Lani I. I don't know how you could say that any differently, I don't think. But it is, I actually don't have photos in front of me. How annoying is this? I only have a list. But it is like a pinky, glossy, is it pink? I mean, it's like a really deep fuchsia tone. And it's quite stumpy in nature when it grows. It's not like a big, you know, long petioles, big leaves. It is more, I think you call them jewel toned or jewel allocations or whatever. In nature, it's a lot more compact. But obviously I wanted this for the color. I'm putting it on there because I, honestly, you guys know me well enough by now, a lot of you will. I'm not really a fan of pink. That's not to say I don't like pink stuff. I do, but it, it's really, there's a time and a place and it, it highly depends on the plant as to if I like it. But the Aslani eye is very, very nice. If I saw it in person, which again, I have not, would I change my mind? Maybe. I, I think so because I do feel like a lot of the photographs on the internet are potentially colour popped a little bit. I don't know. If you own one, let me know. Sorry, I've got cat hair all over my skin and it's really, really irritating me. <laughs> Good lord. People with long hair, do you ever just get, especially if you wear makeup, will you just get that one hair as well from your own head that sort of sticks across you from your makeup and you can't get it off? Pretty sure that's what's happening. Can I see it in my phone? Yeah, I can't see anything. Anyway, number seven. Now, number seven is, I wouldn't say it was going to surprise people, but I think if you didn't know me and you didn't know the history of my channel, you'd probably go, well, literally, really? Are you serious? But I think if you do know the history of my channel, then you understand why it's on here. Because this allocation is a little bit sentimental to me. It's a little bit sentimental to me. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. If you don't quite know where to start, you can always use the inbuilt wizard which will guide you towards the recommended templates for the kind of website you would like to make. Once you have your selected template, follow the instructions on screen and you'll be set up in no time. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you very much, Squarespace. And back to the video. So the next allocation on my list at number seven is the allocation Caladora. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, well, that's pretty boring. It's just green. It's just a green bog standard. You would just call it in a garden center, you'd call it elephant ear and get on with your life. You wouldn't, no one cares. And for the most part, I see what you're saying, but there is a whole ass story to my 
uh, Calador that I had years ago, which I, I might be able to link down below for you, actually. Um, it's a story time I told in literally like like 2019. Like I look hella different, like it's, it's a laugh. So I, t I tell the story of me getting that plant. And it was just a very personal plant to me for a long time. I called it Big Al, which it's funny because now I work with plants that are potentially sometimes huge. And that plant was not big at all. It was like two foot tall. It wasn't big at all, but I called them Big Al. And I do, I do miss them. And I would potentially have another one in my house, actually, because I'm saying I want a Big Al Acacia. I'm not sure what kind of breed. I've been around animals too long. What variety I would have, but it is very sentimental to me. I'm not going to sit here and say there's something special about this plant, guys, because I, I personally, just being real with you, I, I don't think there is. I don't think there is. This is sentimental, 100%. And I will never forget it because it's one of my first allocations and it, it taught me a lot about having alocasia. So that is why it is on this list. But hey, at least I've owned it. At least I've seen it. It's quite an easy one, actually. And to be fair, I say this about all plants, guys. I say this about all plants. But if it is in garden centers, you can bank. It's not too difficult. And don't let that dishearten you if you find them really difficult because alocasia generally, in my opinion, are not the easiest aroid at all. In some senses, they can be similar to anthurium sometimes, if not worse. It really depends on the alocasia. But if you see them in garden centers, give them a go. Give them a go. Honestly, I, I do love them and I would definitely love some in my house. Anyway, moving on. Have I had this before? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I may have. I may have. If I've held it up on the channel, yes, I've had it. Let me know if you think I've had this before. I'm questioning it. I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, number six, we have the Alocasia odora, but I've put in variegated, right? And literally, is there anything on this list that's variegated? No, literally no. They're all just regular versions of Alocasia, right? Well, that was weird. You didn't hear that, but something just happened in my studio and I don't know what it was. It was like a plant rustling like a lot, like it's not fallen, but that's weird. Anyway, so none of the other plants in this list are variegated, but I wanted to put this in because, right, let me explain myself. I wanted to put this in because in terms of the world of variegated alocasia, right, across any type apart from maybe fried egg, I actually think the odora makes the prettiest variegated alocasia. Does that make sense? So I've kind of put it in to represent almost variegated alocasia in a way, right? I just think the odora carries it the nicest. Let me know what you think. I can nearly always find basically a really good picture of one. They seem to carry the variegation very well as well. So if you're looking for one, again, I'm not really saying I'm experienced in it. All I can tell you is variegated alocasia are a minefield. They are horrific to deal with. They look great in theory. They're not so good to deal with, but I do think that's one of the better looking ones for sure. So let me know if you agree with that. Or let me know if you think other ones are better. Don't get me wrong. You can get an alocasia that's variegated in nearly any specimen possible. And it's probably going to look like the best thing you've ever seen. I'm not saying that. You can find a nice variegated anything. But generally, there's only a couple of alocasia that I think carry them really well. And the main one is probably Odora for me. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know. Right. Number five. I love this alocasia. It was one of... It was one of the first plants I had where I started getting a taste for something unusual. And I don't think it was super unusual at the time, but it was before I got into rare plants, but I was starting to, starting to break away, starting to break away. And I saw these plants and I was just like, oh my God, that's, I've never seen anything so cool. And I remember it blew my mind because I didn't know you could get plants that looked like other things, right? It just, it absolutely excited me. I still get excited thinking about it, genuinely. And that was the Alocasia Stingray, guys. Now, I, re I would love one of these back, actually. They, they can get quite leggy, though. It's not the best allocation in terms of lower light, for sure. You need, you need quite a lot of light for them because there's other ones, again, that carry it better at a lower light. Calidora, probably, is one of them. Bigger leaves, makes sense. A bit like Monstera. Larger leaves, maximize the light. General guide. I need a guide on plants like that. But anyway, the one thing I will say about Alocasia stingray, because I, I honestly, guys, I adore these. I absolutely adore these. They're amazing. The one thing I'll say is I don't really like them when they're big. And when I say big, by the way, I mean like three or four foot, about three or four foot tall. I mean, when they get big. So when the leaves get like this big, I just find they don't look as cute as when they're young. But I do love the plant and I would never never talk down the plant really. It's just something that I've noticed. Some plants, it's a bit like some philodendron perhaps. Some people like things more when they're, you know, when they're young rather than when they're mature. Some people prefer Florida Ghost, for example, when it's uh, immature compared to mature. There'll be loads of stuff like that. 
However, the Stingray, I just, I don't love it when it gets big, but I did put it at number five and I have had experience with it. I think I've only ever had one plant, which is a shame because I, I do love that plant. And again, same reason as before. So why we haven't had many allocations in here. It's genuinely why you don't see them much, guys. I, there are some, like, is there one up there? Yes, there is. He's not doing so well. He needs, he needs feed probably, but there's a variegated one up there and it's got black stem on it. It's quite nice. Um, but it's why I don't keep them. Right. Number four, I, I'm sort of cheating slightly because there's two on the list and I didn't really want to put one higher than the other because honestly, I genuinely feel in most people's minds that they're sort of the same. They're sort of the same. They're just different colors. So I kept them together because it's certainly in my mind they are. Now, I think they always had the same value when they had their big like, woo, like every plant ever has had. They had the same value, but I think... It, I'm sure at one point there was one selling more than another, and I think the, the green version came out quicker, which could mean that the silver version is a little bit more difficult, which I think it might be. But anyway, I'm talking about Bosch Bosch, the Alocasia Silver Dragon, and the Alocasia Dragon Scale. So obviously, Dragon Scale is green, Silver Dragon is silver. For all intents and purposes, it's silver. It's like a, I don't know, like a really light, chalky, grey colour anyway. Very, very beautiful plants. Again, it's a little bit like the Alocasia Aslanii, where they're quite stumpy and, you know, just short, short and fat and juicy and almost succulent looking in nature sometimes. They're very, very similar to that. And I do recommend them. I really do. They, they don't handle being shipped very well, but again, uh, Alocasia don't. Alocasia just don't. If you're ever going to buy an Alocasia, by the way, I'm almost going to advise where possible if you can actually pick it up from the shop in person, no matter how small it is. I would almost advise that sometimes because Alocasia don't like being shipped. They hate their lives. So if you can avoid that, great. But I think for the longest time, I, I remember being around when these plants were about £80 each. And I, I, I suspect that's around about $100, something like that. Um, I can't remember that was. Was it end of 2019? Very early 2020, maybe? I can't remember. There was a time when they, they went right up and then obviously they've come right down. I don't know what they are now. I do see them. This is the thing. I see them, but I still feel like I see the, the dragon more, the dragon scale more. Sorry, I nearly said golden dragon. I feel like I see the green one more than the silver one, which again would support the theory that the green one is a bit easier. Do you see what I'm saying? There are many ways, guys, to work out if a plan is easy. And a lot of it is just actually just to see how available it is. That's the best tip I can give you to see how easy a plant is. Obviously, you can gather people's opinions, but hey, if one's more than the other, like in the case of these two, I'm just going to put a bet on that the green is easier. I'm just going to put a bet on. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's the bet I would put on if I, if I was in doubt and I wanted to buy one in a shop. I didn't quite know which, and I guess I had some knowledge of where they were circulating, but that's a thing. But I really, really love this plant. I have somewhere I've got a dragon scale that is like neglected in a corner. I think it's in Chaos Corner. I've got a silver dragon upstairs that is actually quite leggy because I, I put it behind something and forgot about it. Literally, I think when I was rearranging and it's leggy. But they are very, very good plants. I know the dragon, sorry, the silver dragon is slow growing for sure. I think the dragon scale is quicker. Could be another reason why you don't see the silver as much. But they're both good. Honestly, go with your color preference because I think generally you should be all right with either. But that is why I've put it on number four. Yes, I'm cheating. Yes, I've put two down. But let me know if you agree with me where you literally consider them kind of the same plant except one silver, even though they aren't. Let me know if you agree with me because I'm actually quite curious about that. Ah, I'm cheating again. I'm cheating again. So number three, there are kind of two plants and not everyone knows about this plant, but I've had a bit of heartbreak about this plant recently. Just, just a little bit, just a little bit. I hope these come back around. So the plant in at number three is literally, this was like, I don't want to say it was rare, right? That's like a, ooh, word most of the time, right? But it was not very available at all when I first got mine and they were quite expensive. But then about a year later, when I was visiting the Netherlands, I think when I was doing the documentary and stuff, there was all, there was whole greenhouses full of them. Like it didn't end. It just didn't end. That, by the way, is the Alocasia zebrina, right? Beautiful plant. Absolutely love it. If you want a, an Alocasia that's really arrow shaped, like literally like this, that's your boy. That's your boy. And obviously the, the, the stems, the petioles look magnificent. Really, really good. They're not even too difficult either. Again, as evidenced by the fact they're everywhere. Very, very contemporary plant, that one. Really, really good. And they can almost get a bit leggy and sort of still sort of look all right. They're, they're not like stingrays. Stingrays are really bad for that. But 
The other plant I'm sort of adding on to it is the Zabrina reticulata, which I'm assuming essentially is just a mutant Zabrina. The, how do you ever describe this kind of pattern? I've struggled with this for years, you know, I've struggled with this for years. Let me know if you've got a good description for it and I'll start using it. But it's like, a, it's, I don't know, I don't know how you describe this. It almost looks viral sometimes, but in a bit more of an intentional way, because I don't like things that look viral generally. But this, it looks just as, it looks as, I can't speak today. It looks intentional enough that that is the thing, right? Now, I'm putting it in because I don't think everyone knows about it. I'm putting it in because I don't know how rare it is anymore. I feel like they started coming out, but it might be a bit more money. Don't know. Um, I had one for a while and everyone loved it. Everyone loved it. And I do you remember what I kept telling you? I'm not going to repot it. I'll kill it. I'm not going to repot it. I'll kill it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But I did. And I killed it. <laughs> I killed it. I did seem to have a baby pup around somewhere and I found it a few weeks ago, I think, and it was about this tall. And I was like, oh my God, it's not dead. It's not dead. There's a piece of it left and I can't find it again, which leads me to think it's dead again. So it's now like dead, dead. So I don't have that anymore, but I had to put it in because whichever one you choose, it's a pretty iconic plant. You see it a lot, by the way, in like furniture adverts and like interior design stuff. It's definitely one of the plants that get like brought out. Maybe not so much now, but there was a point in time when they were literally everywhere. You always see them in some sort of, I don't know, boutique shop and stuff like that. There's always one in the corner. It is normally stuffed in the corner. It seems to be doing okay. I just love these plants. Honestly, you can't really go wrong with them. And I'm assuming by this point, they're quite cheap. But you know what? I'm saying this. I'm saying this right now, Satya, and I can't remember the last time I saw one. I'm going to report back to you on that because as I say, I'm going to London in about a week or so and I'll be looking at loads of plant shops. So if you've got any that are good that I should go to, let me know. Um, and I will tell you what I find there. I might even film a little bit if I can. And I will tell you what's out there because I'm not even sure myself anymore. It's been a little while since I've been in a plant shop. But anyway, that's at number three. I've mushed the two together. It doesn't really matter. I more wanted to mention the, the reticulatus so that you knew about it. Because not everyone does, you know. Not everyone does. Right, number two. I would say that I haven't owned this plant, but that I remembered this morning. I'm going to really congest it again. Great. My voice is about to change. Sorry, guys. I would say that I haven't had this plant, but I think I have... I think I have because I sold variegated ones. I just think it was at a time where it was 2020 and it was a blur. It was a blur 2020. Don't ever ask me to go through 2020 again. Work-wise, just don't do it. Literally, I don't remember most of it. If there wasn't a documentary there to tell me what I'd been doing, I swear to you guys, I would not remember most of 2020. Like literally, literally, I wouldn't remember it. But I think I sold them. So Alocasia Frydeck, right? It's got to be in at number two. I have been obsessed with this plant for the longest time, the longest time. And I still now, in plant shops online, see Frydeck. Literally, I see it. But it's always got a bit of a price tag for like a nice large one because I thought to myself, no, I'm going to get a, I'm gonna get a beast. They've got quite a price tag on them still. Like you can't really get them for like no money. Obviously you can if you're going to go small and grow them out. But oh, guys, it, there's, no, there's no other way to put it. I work with plants every day and I, I, I do get a bit impatient now because I have expectations a little bit. If I want something for me, I will just try and pay the money and have the bigger plant, right? I just want something established. I'm, I, all I do every day is grow things from little cuttings just for once. I want a big plant, right? But I keep seeing them and they are quite expensive. And I'm like, oh, yeah. and I really want to buy them. But because it's an allocation, I just get a bit like, oh, should I, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? And it's a bit of a thing. But I think if I did, I've got to have a fried egg at some point because I love them because they're very contrasty. They've got a lovely shape to them. They're velvet and they're really dark. Like these are a nice plant. Not only that, but I see fried egg a lot on Instagram in big collections and stuff. And a lot of the time, collectors have, I don't want to say they've stuffed them into a corner, if you know what I mean, but they're not in like optimal places, you could say. Now, they might have been positioned for a photo. It's Instagram, who knows? But a lot of the time, I feel like these things grow well in low light. They do. And I feel like when I've had them in, because I've had them in from like Thailand and stuff, I haven't, I don't feel like I can judge how good they are because they've come and they've gone back to the comb. Essentially, I've had to grow them back out again most of the time. Ugh, alocasia, Jesus Christ. So I can't tell you how good they are, but they have to be because they're in garden centers, right? And I do see a lot of collectors with them. So it's definitely on my list, even though I've sort of had it, sort of haven't. You be the judge of that. I definitely had some variegated ones in. Definitely, but they were a nightmare to grow out. But again, they came with no root. They went back to the comb. I think that might be one. Was that one in the documentary that Ben just, just literally just pulled in half? There was one, I remember we were packing once. It was in front of house in there. And he pulled, he just pulled it off the root, the, the comb. 
Do you remember that? Does anyone remember that? Let me know what plant that was if anyone wants to go back and watch that little section. I think it's in episode three. Episode three. Right, that leaves my number one. Now, if you have a keen uh, interest, I suppose, in, in my channel and the, the things I like, hopefully you've noticed that there is one missing. Again, I don't talk about allocation as much as the other plants, so you'd be forgiven for not realising. But the plant I have to put at number one, it just speaks to me. It is shorter, it is darker, it's got a very unique look and feel and pattern and everything. And I just feel that in terms of a stumpy allocation, this is the one. I'm a sucker for dark foliage, guys, honestly. I don't know what kind of person people think I am, like, outside of the shop, but I'm, I'm a little bit dark, I'm a little bit spicy. So I really, really like that kind of plant. I like my variegates, but I really like dark things, right? That is my vibe. Like, I would love a goth plant room. I might have to do it one day, literally. But the plant I've got in at number one, which I'm obsessed with, and I have one upstairs and it's in really bad shape. Disclaimer, I need to fix that because <laughs> it's in the pot with the silver dragon and it's just as leggy because it got left behind something for like god knows how long but the plant in my number one is the alocasia black velvet guys this plant this plant i adore this plant it's wonderful it's easy to grow it looks cute they pop quite well i think so you can make more of them i do actually have experience with this plant i think i got one a long time ago long long time ago maybe 2019 early 2019 as well um could have even been 2018 who knows um and then i've had one i had to buy one off ebay funny enough uh, was it last year or the year before to have it here because nowhere was selling black velvet now since i've seen them so I can either do some with that or I can leave it and just let it live its best leggy life and get another one, you know, for the house. But I really, really want one in the house. I really, really want one in the house. And I think it's great because it's not going to get really big and leggy. It can, and I'll have to show you at some point because, uh, guys, I'm not making this up. They do not look good up there. But they can just look really, really nice. And they're one of my favourites. And they're black. It's black. It's black. And I always say this, but the pattern on the leaves looks a lot like tire tread. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it just does for me, but I absolutely love it. So without a doubt, that is my number one alocasia. Now let me know what you think of this list, because I appreciate I have not owned all of them. Hopefully the reasons that I haven't owned a lot of these plants have become clear to you, i.e. it's a light thing and a shipping thing. But that is my list and that is what I'm sticking to, with the exception of number 10 that could honestly, it could probably be interchanged with something else. And there was a few that I liked and I just thought, mm, let's just leave that one in because I always did like the nebula. So without further ado, thank you very much for watching this video. Please leave in the comments below your top three. I don't expect anyone to write top tens, okay? You can if you like, don't get me wrong. But either write your top three or your top alocasia of all time because I did this on my other videos and it's quite interesting because I think... Was it philodendron? I, I had a lot of people agreeing with me on most things, I think. Generally, they would, they would say their top 10 was similar in a lot of ways. So I'm curious to see what alocasia is like because I haven't delved into the world of alocasia very much. So a lot of you guys are more expert than me on alocasia, if I'm honest. So let me know what you think about that. I'm genuinely quite curious. But anyway, that's it for this week's video. I'm going to love you and leave you. If you're curious about this feed and you want to know more, visit nurturesystem.co.uk or the link is in the description literally and you can buy it if you're in the uk it will expand very soon i will let you know i promise you and if you'd like to see any more of my content then please feel free to subscribe that's it for this week's video guys i will love you and leave you and i will see you in the next one bye